I'm just going to pull it locally to my computer. I'm going to also send you a link here. In case some people are not familiar with Ethan through my... Yeah, how can we get familiar with him quickly? Uh, I just want to post this. I, I just dropped it down in general. Uh, go to that that Reddit link to give you a taste of the kind of crazy that Ethan is. Like, okay. I have some videos on my channel that... I Yeah, I haven't really talked about this guy that much. Can you, so this is an AMC guy. Can you kind of get, can you give like a, a, an explain like I'm five uh, explanation of who this yeah, guy is? I to explain, but uh, it, the, the, the thing I really want to show is the thing that's at the, the top, the actual OP image, not the one that went to my comment. Yeah, that. Okay. Um, so Ethan is here's here's a little back history on ethan ethan is what is uh is one of the objectors from the amc settlement lawsuit he was one of the ones that were the pro se filers he is not only insane crazy unhinged but also dumb <laughs> okay he fancies himself as a legal expert when he most assuredly is not and he is the founder of the project popcorn group which is a group of shareholders that um, are real ass hurt about Adam Aaron, which, you know, n n that on its face is not necessarily a bad thing. Adam Aaron has done some pretty skeezy stuff with this company or some pretty questionably stuff. Questionable sure. Stuff with this company at the very least with how it's been managed. However, uh, this is a group of people who have, have done some things in the past. Uh, he's, he's, he he and his group, as has been chronicled on my channel uh, in the the Prince's Amount Stupid series, uh, had a live stream not too long ago where they threatened violence against Adam Aaron, physical violence at one of their little. They were planning to protest in front of the AMC headquarters, which is just a hop and a skip down from where I live, and which was also a, a, became a point of contention because now they all think that I work for AMC, which I find fucking hilarious. Uh, they 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 were also threatening violence against Gary Gensler. Uh, uh, me and and uh, uh, Lynn probably remembers that episode. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. That's that's that's, that's um that's his group. Uh, Ethan has also threatened that he's going to sue me. But like most of these people, they don't know which side is up or down, uh, let alone be able to you know actually sue someone. His right. most recent activity was supporting uh, Mr. Willis Nelson Willis who uh, was sending threats of a anti-Semitic variety to Adam Aaron during the course of the, uh, the litigation in Delaware. Uh, he fought, uh, Adam Aaron went to file for a restraining order, but when it was told that he had to appear in Texas to you know, get this restraining order, uh, he quietly decided to withdraw it. So uh, oh. Mr. Willis decided with, uh, with, uh, Ethan's help to sue him back and <laughs> that's currently ongoing right now and is its own little thing that I'm also covering on my channel that is hilariously entertaining but not in any good way you know it's like it's, it's like peanut gallery munching material but yeah which this on anyone really uh dealing with a crazy unhinged uh guy who uh uh, who believes that the earth is flat and that space does not exist and we have not been to the moon. Oh boy. It's highly anti-Semitic. If you go down to the comment that was actually the link that was from mine, you will see an image of him making death threats against AMC influencers and using uh, Nazi imagery to- There it is. Uh, yes, that one. Wow. As he says that he's going to line these people up facing a firing squad while, you know, Nazi imagery is playing in the clip. Wow. This is the kind of person that these are the kind of people that Ethan Leibovitz supports. And the oh, kind of boy. Person Ethan is. OK, so um, a Jew, by the way, I would mention he's also Jewish. Oh, people. he's Jewish. But oh, totally okay. oh, because man, because it's against the right people. Wait a minute. Do I, I don't want to do this on the stream in case it d reveals anything incriminating. <laughs> Not really. Um, yeah, Ethan might come and try and sue you next. <laughs> right. Anyway, uh, let's get this, uh, let's see here, this phone call clip here. So, um, 
you'll want to, like I said in the chat, you'll want to skip ahead. I think it's like about a minute or so because he says the their phone okay. out loud. And I get it's their business number probably, but I just. No, that's <laughs> fine. Yeah. Oh, I don't want to. Adjacently do stuff like that. I certainly don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. So I'll skip two minutes in. Is that good? It's two minutes? Probably because he he, uh, he tries to call her the first time and the, the call drops because okay. I guess she, it's her cell phone or something like that. And she was somewhere that messed with the signal or something. Ah, okay. Let me see here. I know there's not any. Get ready for full on cringe because this guy has only one volume and it's 11. Oh, God. Um, okay. I'll, I'll ride the uh, volume fader then. Going out with the right time and everything. And who's the yeah, administrator? Who, who's, administ um, who's administrating the postcard notice? I really, I, honestly, my colleague James uh, is the lead counsel on this, but so you have you, Okay, you uh, have, pause can, here. There's a little bit of story time office? for that okay. one. Okay. In the AM, in, in the A, in the AMC lawsuit, uh, the the um, postcard notice was administered by uh, uh, I think it's Strategic Claims Services. Okay. They, they basically do a lot of services like this for lawsuits where they, they will make sure that the notice goes out to the brokers and to the benefic uh, and, and to the people who directly own it so that they get their notice of the settlement being pendency and all that stuff and can respond to the settlement if they want to in court. Well, since this was an expedited case, mm -hmm. things, of course, got a little gunky. SCS sent notice out to a lot of brokers, and in spite of everyone's hate of a certain broker, guess which one was the one that had most of the shares of AMC oh. held beneficially for their customers? Right. Robinhood, right? Yes. Robinhood required two notices. They tried to contact them at the beginning, got no response from Robinhood, and then about two weeks before the settlement deadline to get your, you know, your written... Uh, mm -hmm. Postcard? Uh well, not to get your written uh, brief into the court so that you could. Oh, oh, right, right, right. Hearing. Okay. Robin Hood finally got their notice, and it probably took them a bit to get that notice out. Um, so there was a lot of shareholders because, you know, postage and getting the postcards and sending out the notice that didn't get their postcards to like a few days before the deadline or after the deadline. Mm -hmm. where it's kind of moot at that point. The court's not going to extend it. So uh, there was some kerfungling with Ethan and his merry game, gang of imbeciles to try and get the court to extend the deadline. The court would not extend the deadline because Delaware law, and by extension federal law, because they borrow a lot from the Delaware Court of Chancery on these sorts of things, right. is that if you own your shares beneficially through a broker or some other third party, instead of owning them directly, you are directly the owner, it is on you to be on notice of the settlement. Right. Uh, they, they can't. They don't know who you are. The, the company doesn't know who you are. Exactly. Right. The company doesn't know who you are. They just know Fidelity owns it. And they got the Correct. Of Fidelity. Yeah, so right. It is on you. If Fidelity doesn't give you the notice, tough fucking noogies. We notice <laughs> you. Right. We notice the, the third party entity that owns your shares for you. And more, more generally, more broadly here, I, I think it's worth notice mentioning that everybody who is bitching about this knew about all of this yes, like that's the other point that was brought up it was like and the court's going to look at that I, I would think like what wait a minute here was anybody actually harmed by this or not because it seems like everybody who was concerned about it already knows about it so yeah it, this was yeah. brought up when ethan tried to mention it in court it's like you have been filing multiple times on this so you're clearly on notice of the settlement. So A, why does it matter to you? And B, if you're trying to say that, oh, well, I'm doing this for the people who don't know, you don't get to do that, Mr. That's Mr. not – litigant. Yeah, that's not your – That's not how that works. No. You don't represent anybody. Go away. Right, right. Um, and what's the claim anyway? What's the – what, what is the actual like – I don't know. Like what? what is the damage? Like is there anything that you could actually even point to? Like I don't think – <laughs> well, here's the thing. In this case, at the very least, Ethan and his merry band of idiots created a sort of form that you could fill that you could just fill in your name and stuff. That was basically the same arguments. Now, right. I understand that people love love their petitions on the internet, but you know what? <laughs> the court is about finding legal, you know, legal filings, right? You know, legal truths. 
It's yeah. about discovering who's right and wrong. It's about evidence-based so when thinking. You send yeah. in a brief, it doesn't matter how many times you fucking copy it and have your minions send it. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing, and the court will all treat them as one thing. That is one argument, and they will address yeah. the arguments. It doesn't matter how many fucking times you send it to the court. Right. This, it's like this isn't this isn't like a democracy, guys. Well, they think it's, it's like judicial circles pumping a meme stock. Like if you everybody know, buys it, know. then the price will have to go up, right? Yeah. If everybody sends in or, the same right. copy of the letter, they'll just it'll be like it magnifies its effect, right? Or it's like an election where you know if, if yeah. forty thousand people send in the same argument and they all agree, then the court has to agree with us. No, there is court precedent. There is laws that are applicable. It doesn't matter how many people think that those laws are wrong. Go to your fucking congressman and change the laws then. But that's why he's getting all niggly about the postcards. Who's doing the postcards? Who's doing the postcards? Okay. He's already got his conspiracy wheels turning. Okay. All right. Okay. So that's kind of what we're hearing here at the beginning. I'm going to hit play. Okay. Then let me ask you this. Um, who? I see Wait. That you've no so who is he talking to here? That might be good to know. He's talking to one of the lawyers. I'm going to have to get a little more. This is a story on, on this whole thing. OK, go ahead. So in the middle of the eighth lawsuit, two lawyers and I have some videos on my YouTube channel dealing with this case, filed a lawsuit against Antara based on the SEC short swing rules, where if you're an insider, either, you know, as a corporate as, as a member of the corporate board or management, C-suite people or you own i think it's either five or ten percent i'm pretty sure it's ten percent or more of the company yeah you're considered a director right at that point you're an insider you're an insider yeah and so you have different rules where if you acquire a position you have to wait a certain period of time before you can sell mm -hmm. and tara had 17 percent amc they held because of their 27 percent ownership of ape because remember, Ape was just preferred shares of AMC. They're collectively mm -hmm. with common considered equity ownership in the company. So they were subject to the short swing laws. So the short swing rule, just for clear, just to, because I just uh, mm -hmm. briefly looked it up here, um, it requires company insiders to return to the company any profits from the purchase and sale of company stock if both transactions occur within a six month period. That is. The part of the Securities Exchange Act of 1934, 16B. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if you remember correctly, Antara was playing the arbitrage like I was during the AMC Ape thing. So they were constantly buying and selling Ape uh, uh, puts on AMC. And I don't exactly agree with this law on this, but they treat the purchasing of puts as if you sold shares. Oh. Now... Yeah. Oh, okay. And they and they consider the purchase of calls buying shares. Right, right, and right. Profits from the sell of either of those hmm. violation of the short swing rule. Well, I mean, That's what this lawsuit is about. Okay, so what is it still ongoing? It is is currently in settlement talks right now. We'll, we'll get. <laughs> uh, let me. Okay. Yeah. No. No. Sorry. Yeah. Line. Go for it. No, that's 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 fine. All right. So these two lawyers, uh, lawyers, one of the ones that he is talking to right now is Miss Tabbert, I believe. Uh, I can't remember her first name off the top of my head, but she's one of these lawyers that if you go through there, because this is one of the cool things with Pacer, if you see a lawyer's name on a filing, you can put them into the. Um, into oh yeah pacer search and then get their entire legal history that's awesome yeah history. and i did that with all the lawyers on this litigation and found out that they're basically ambulance chasers they can mm. read public filings from the sec when it and and if they see something like this where they violate the short swing rule they come in they buy a few shares and then they sue these people and, you know, sometimes it works out. Sometimes they fail to, to serve these people and it doesn't work out and they, you know, just voluntarily dismiss. But basically that's what they do. They go, Miss Tabbert and a bunch of these people, they just basically, they're lawyers. So they can pro se buy a couple shares and file a pro se lawsuit suing them on SEC short swing rules, which is going to be important in this discussion later. So, okay. uh, Antara, I want to say in about October, uh, appeared in the case and they came to terms for settlement. Uh, the settlement was, uh, it is $3.3 million. 
to whom and that will just go back to AMC, AMC. right? Right, right. Yes. Yeah, because of that, that's what the remedy is for the short swing. Because it's assumed yeah. that if it goes back to the company, that puts cash on their balance sheet. So that would be a way to recover for shareholders because the value of their shares would go up because the company has been given this cash mm -hmm. calculated into the, you know, so. They're just their cash coffers. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're this is why cash account. Derivative lawsuit. Yeah. It's on behalf of AMC. AMC. Correct. Right. And we've seen these before. It's not the first one we've seen with AMC either. There was that one uh, with that had to do with uh, Wanda and Linda Lau or whatever her name was, right? Yeah. Before, yeah. So, uh, so um, right now, because it's a derivative lawsuit on behalf of AMC, which means that AMC shareholders would be involved, and it's a settlement, AMC shareholders as owners of AMC, since it's being done on behalf of AMC, have mm -hmm. to say if the settlement should be approved. So that's the point in this whole thing we're at. They have got. They have reached a settlement. The settlement has been approved between the two parties. But since the court is dealing with a settlement in the same way, if it was a class action shareholder lawsuit, since it's more or less a class action lawsuit, the court has to give its thumbs up and approval for all the parties that cannot be there. It has to be generally <laughs> approved by the class. Ah, okay. So I've got a Bloomberg Law article up here. Um, about the this is from June of last year. Um, yes. Yeah, it says. Let's see this suit. Um, da, 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 da. Wait a minute here now. It said something about phone calls, <laughs> and you know maybe you can speak to this. Mm -hmm. Hedge fund said in a court filing last month that it has been getting threatening phone calls from people claiming to be AMC stockholders. Yep. The filing asked a Delaware judge to block the theater operator's highly engaged base of retail investors from seeing confidential court filing files. It cited concerns that, that additional uh, closers more to that, but yes. could, quote, threaten the safety, health and safety, unquote, of Antara employees. The judge ultimately gave the investors run uh, restricted access. Correct. Okay. They also they also were threatening the plaintiffs when they went to settle Oh boy, the no voters did not like that, and they oh, I bet threats to them as well, which was brought up on, in court filings. Oh, wow. Okay, um, one of them withdrew, uh, though it was not explicitly said why they withdrew. One of the the reasons was that it was it was kind of danced around, but the uh, the uh, what was alluded to was that it was because he was just sick of getting all these threats. Uh huh. Right. So this is the original lawsuit here. It looks like well, what I've got that I've been able to pull up on Bloomberg Law here. Dennis Donahue and Mark Rubenstein. Oh, okay. And she's one of the lawyers. Uh, Miriam. Miriam. Tauber. Uh, Tauber. Okay. Now, question here: Who are these guys? Dennis Donahue and Ru Mark Rubenstein. They're just AMC shareholders, Share or shareholders. what? The people but that that own shares. Of do we know anything about their background at them. all? Do we know? Do we know uh, anything about than, their background? Like, are they? Than, Yes, other than that they are usually proxies for Miss Tauber and the other lawyer that's mentioned up there when they want to do these lawsuits. And I assume they get – when you do a, a lawsuit like this, whether it's a clash action or a, 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 a derivative lawsuit, there's a kickback as a part of that $3.3 billion that goes to the people who filed it. It's sort of like a, a finder's fee, a, a, a bounty as it were, so that you know people want to bring these litigations – Mm -hmm. It's good for corporate governance. It's good for, you know. So where did the, what was the impetus you think for this suit? Do you think it came from Donahue and Rubenstein or do you think it came from the attorneys and, uh, or th th they were, the attorneys. they were looking for these types of opportunities to go after this type of thing. Mm -hmm. And they're the and Donahue and Rubenstein are the useful idiots in a way. Maybe they might not be idiots, but they're they're basically just the 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 medium by which they can do this because they the lawyers can't do it themselves basically because they're not they could, they could, they could. Pro se, and in fact yeah they could Lopez I think it is the other lawyer David Lopez mm -hmm. has has done a couple uh, pro se ones on some okay but it's just much easier for them because they will also get a payout as part of the, because they can submit their it's it's much better for yeah. lawyers this way yeah. Because, not only do your they have a client, <laughs> they're being paid, right? Correct. Yeah. 
and those fees would be paid by the defendant in a settlement. So right, you have to pay right. Not only for the plaintiffs, but for the lawyers at the same time. Right, and who doesn't and that's like why that? You will see all four of these people in a bunch of lawsuits because they all know that's oh, an easy way to quick pay. So they're professionals at this, basically, is what you're saying. They're they're not. They don't care about AMC. They're not. They don't care about AMC. They just. This is just what they do. Correct. Basically, you go on Pacer and look up those four names. Mm-hmm. Find them all connected together, doing cases like this all the time. I gotcha. This is what okay. Do. All right. Anything else for the background? No. As for right now, no. That, that's okay. Like all right. Continuing on the call. So, so Ethan is talking to this lawyer, Miriam Tauber, Esquire here. Okay. Great. I don't need to copy it. All right. Here we go. Uh, you've represented the these plaintiffs multiple times. The plaintiffs. Yeah, Mr. Rubenstein and Dennis Donahue multiple times. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I like your yeah. matter of fact statement of just so like, I got a no, question. <laughs> right, yeah, what's that about? That's bizarre. <laughs> okay. My practice, the plaintiff is a nominal plaintiff. It's really on behalf of the company, right? So the I, company gets most of the I, I totally understand yeah. the dyna- dynamics here. The question I have for you is this. Antara got a windfall of over eight hundred million dollars. You understand they rigged the vote? Are you, do you understand the dynamics of what happened with Project Popcorn? Hello? Hello? Yeah, this is where they get disconnected in the middle of the conversation. Hello? Like oh, okay. But it comes back. It comes. Twenty twenty four. She hung up on me. Three oh two. That. Now notice how he's Hello? chronicling this because he thinks he's getting oh, nice. evidence on. It. On these operators. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. We'll get more. We'll get back okay. to that at, at the end of this. I'm going to be listening. I got to run downstairs to my kitchen real quick here. Uh, but uh, I will be, I'll be listening. So I can't stop it. So I'll be back in a couple minutes. I don't know. What's your last name, Ethan? I got a question. Are you aware of Project Popcorn, the scheme? I don't know. I don't know anything to do with that. I know there's a lot of stuff going on with AMC, and we're not the only lawsuit. There's I, I totally lawsuit. understand, but you're yeah, you're I you're know. you're settling with Antara, a company we're only that we're settling one claim. We're settling a 16B claim. I, right? I, I but hold on. Uh, Did you you're, read you're, the settlement agreement that was filed? I, Miriam, can I have ask you? Can I have one minute, less than a minute, yeah. to ask a question? Yeah, but you keep asking me all these unrelated questions. I don't know anything about, so I don't have. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Ask me anything you want. Unrelated. You're now settling with a company that helped and aided and abetted AMC in a Project Popcorn scheme to rig a vote. You're now settling with uh, us putative class members are fully aware of the scheme called Project Popcorn. Are you aware of the elements of the scheme? I don't know anything about that, but if you read the settlement agreement, as I'm trying to tell you, it's very limited. We're not settling all claims against Ontario. I, I don't so care. I, I don't even care. There's another claim involving a different thing that it's not covered by our agreement. Miriam, right? I'm going to ask you this. Gonna, Miriam, gonna, hold on, hold on. Miriam. You're now releasing them of a claim that other people. You don't understand what I'm saying. Yes, okay, I can. I'm going to cut in again here. Okay. Of is only one claim. Why okay. release them anyway, M- Miriam? Why are you releasing for a settlement of three point two million dollars? Do you know what our claim is? Hey, Scott, of course I do. Okay, so what's our claim? Oh, you you're asking me that they traded uh, short-term gains and they they could they're not allowed to. In violation. Purchases and sales, right? Right. Now, here's a, here's the question I have for you. Why were they allowed because to... We're wh- not releasing other claims. We're not letting them off the hook for anything else. Miriam. Miriam. Right? Miriam. Have you not read? Hey, Scott. Miriam. Miriam. Have you not read? Do you speak Hebrew? Miriam, do you speak Hebrew? I do, actually. Yeah, fair. Bonnie the Bell is the Niralis Loma Vinache. I'm not like fluent in Hebrew. I mean, I, I understand they're fluent in American, you know, I'm not Israeli. <laughs> Miriam, here's the here's the yeah. problem that us putative class members are going to expose you guys. Yeah. We're going to ambush. What are you talking about? Ma- ma- then listen, Miriam. 
Marion, hey, Marion, how about this? You got the floor for whatever you want, and then allow me to speak. Let's do it. Go ahead. You got the flashlight right now. When the flashlight's in your hand, go ahead. You got the floor. No, no. I don't. I don't even have to answer your phone call. Do you understand that? You're welcome to come to the hearing. Ma'am, you're representing the class. You're representing the class, correct? No, we're representing the company, AMC. It's a derivative. You're not representing the company. They're a nominal defendant. We're not. This is not a class action. Okay. So it's, this is a different kind of case. It's a derivative case. Correct. That's you're suing, case. your client is, is, is suing a nominal defendant, AMC, and the defendants are on Tara. Now, here's the problem I have with you. You are now settling, you're now settling with a company that you don't even know why the short-term uh, windfall. I mean, when they flipped it. That's why we have to settle, okay? But, AMC is probably going to declare bankruptcy, right? And if they declare bankruptcy, then everybody gets nothing. Ma Miriam, do you understand the scheme? I'm going to ask you one last time, because I'm now going to tell the district judge, I'm now going to tell the district judge that you and I had a colloquy, and you have no clue what Project Popcorn is. Great. Okay. Now, tell the district judge anything you want. How much money are you asking from the settlement? I told you that my colleague, James Hunter, is in charge of this case, so I really want you to direct all questions to him. Have you spoken to him? No, no, you're the first person I was going to speak to. Mr. Lopez? No, James Hunter. There's only two uh, notice of appearances, one from Lopez and one from uh, you. No. Do you see James Hunter on there? Hold on, parties. Represented by... You got David Lopez, Miriam uh, Tauber, and... And James Hunter, do you see him on there? Nope. Okay, well, he... I don't know if I'm looking at the right docket then, because... He it, trust Scott. me, it's the right docket, sweetie. Okay. Well, Docket entry is 23-04985. Trust me, it's the right document, sweetie. Okay. Wow. Uh, here, here, can you pause it for a second? Yep, yep, go for it. Okay. So when he was what he was going into, and I think he explained it as you, as you rolled it by, is he thinks, again, you got to put on your conspiracy caps here, your tinfoil hats. Mm-hmm. He thinks that Miriam and, and the other plaintiffs and their lawyers – Instead of being your classic, um, your classic uh, ambulance chasers, his his conspiracy theory from the original AMC lawsuit is that it was not an actual lawsuit. What this was was people that were hired by AMC to sue AMC. <laughs> wait for it, and and create a settlement which would release them from the claims so no actual AMC shareholders could sue AMC. Never mind the fact that oh. crazy pieces of shit could get off their fucking ass to file the lawsuit themselves. So why would AMC need to do that? These, these mm -hmm. people are like constructing their little fantasy worlds after the fact to explain things. It's like how it's, it's, it's like with the, with the, like the JFK assassination. Well, we already have our conclusion. That this must be this way. So how do we construct things to fit our bullshit narrative? Yep. Uh, yep. Yep. Oh yeah. And see, <laughs> the problem is that, uh, that does happen. You know, it does happen, but it doesn't always happen. And it doesn't always happen when something that you don't want, like when the, right. the outcome that you don't want happens. Oh, well, we have to figure out how it's not my fault. How is it not my fault? Right. How am I not wrong? Like, okay. They thought that these people were heroes when they first sued, and then they settled. They were letting Adam Aaron off the hook. So now they have don't, to be the bad guys. I mean, don't. Don't these clowns understand, like, how, what percentage of lawsuits are settled? Like, what do you, what the fuck, especially in finance, like, you think they're actually going to fucking go, how often do they, these fucking things go to trial? That's like, I don't know, but. Look up, let me see if I can find the case here. But there is a, a, a case in, let me get it out of my archives here. A case in uh, the Delaware Court of Chancery that goes straight to that. It's Delaware precedent. It's Rome v. Archer. It's courts favor the mutual settlement of contested claims because it's a good use of judicial um, economy because there's a bunch of cases that go to the system. And if two people can come to terms that solves their problems, good. Courts prefer that. So y Right, right, right. Uh, right. Sorry. I, um, I, I believe I've got no, it no, here, but right. I, I, this is uh, more detail than I would – prefer to uh there's got to be a uh yeah that's the actual filing but yeah, right it's, it's, it's rome v archer if you ever want to read it yeah the basic gist of that ruling is courts prefer 
the amicable resolution between two parties of contested claims rather than going to trial. Through the action. It goes through the entire process of how the settlement process works uh -huh. in the Delaware Court of Chancery and in federal courts because they borrow a lot of Delaware precedent. Okay, so gotcha. That's basically what all of that is going over in that in that ruling, and that's from the Delaware Supreme Court. But but that, that's the point that that he doesn't seem to get is most of these end in settlement because it's expensive to go to trial. Now here's something, and I'm just reading through this here real quick. The object. This is from the Rome versus Archer uh, filing. The objectants, which I love that word, objectants who produced no evidence at the settlement hearing renewed their motion for discovery after making certain deletions from the motion for production of documents. Sounds very, very, very familiar to the shit yeah. that we've heard so much, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, and here's the thing is, is that I keep getting back to is like, they could have filed this lawsuit. They could have been the ones to file the law. Mm -hmm. As always with them, they are yeah. just too fucking lazy to get off their a ass. A day late <laughs> and a dollar short. Shareholder. <laughs> yep. And so they, they settled. And so... Uh, and, and so the other thing that's in Rome v. Archer and uh, also in Folk v. Good is that there has to be a give and take if in a settlement. So a party has to, in order to get something, give up something. So if you want AMC to give you something, you have to give up the claims that you were suing them over. That's that's how that works. So that's what he's afraid of. Right. Like, okay. He's going to give up all these claims, but they've already been given up in the AMC Delaware case. Mm-hmm have a settlement in a state court that goes out to all federal courts as well. And it makes Delaware the jurisdiction for all claims under the settlement. So that's what okay. he's of that, that, that these claims against Antara for the, but, but, but Miriam's pointing out, it's like, it's not all claims against Antara. It's all claims against Antara relating to the SEC short swing violation. Right. It's not a blanket. It's, given up. it's, it's just for this issue. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Just for this issue. He thinks that he can't be he thinks that he can't sue them for anything in the future is what you're saying. That's what he thinks. Which, yes. Yes. But also is irrelevant because that's already covered in the AMC Delaware case. But yes. Yeah. OK. He thinks that it's just, she can give this broad thing. It's like, no, it can only be about the issues that were in the case. All right. Against the parties that were in the case. Right. 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 Other parties. Obviously, if something else were to come to light about some other issue having to do with the company and some other well, well, participants, it depends, if it's within the bounds of the like the settlement, so like say no, 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 outside of the settlement, outside, completely outside, yeah, completely outside. There's another short swing trade. Yes, you can sue them. Yeah, this but bar them forever and eternity. Right. Okay. All right. Continuing here. I'm. I'm a ancillary co-counsel on this case and I have an agreement with my counsel that he is the main counsel and on this that particular matter I am deferring to my lead counsel on this who is taking care of this matter. I really am very tangentially involved in this case. If it was any other case I'd be happy to discuss the details with you but this case I'm, a, I'm taking a very passive role in it because my colleague James Hunter is the lead counsel. All right then then let me let me ask you one last question and then we could part our ways okay. excuse me yeah go ahead i i've laid the foundation that i noticed that you guys have represented mr rubenstein and mr donahue missed multiple times sure are you guys hired by the opposing the defendants to procure settlements and releases i don't know what you're talking about every case is different okay so I'll, then i'll explain it again miriam i'm going to ask you this again because you're not aware of what happened in delaware and i've told you i'm, I'm only very like moderately aware but i think there's a case in delaware. Uh, i don't know what happened. then miriam i'll lay it i told you let me have the flashlight for a second you had it before okay, in delaware still to me and i don't understand why i mean i don't need to entertain your phone call just to be like yelled at and Badger yelled at. Right? I'm asking. I, call I, I, I see on the internet there's a lot of like negative things written about me and David Lopez about my clients, everything else. I don't think you guys fully understand what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna Fine, so I'm not going to respond. <laughs> Boy, that is the understatement of the fucking century, right there. You know, holy shit. <laughs> I don't think you guys understand what is going on in this case. 
I mean, listen to what she says. It's, it clearly doesn't. It's great. Entertain your then Miriam, I'll lay it. I, I told you, let me have the flashlight for a second. You had it before <laughs> in Delaware. <laughs> like this, you called her. Your... Right, right. God, what a clown. Listen, listen to this here. Then Miriam, I'll lay it. I, I told you, let me have the flashlight for a second. You had it before <laughs> in Delaware. Still to me, and I don't understand why. I mean, I don't need to entertain your phone call just to be like yelled at and badgered. Yelled at? Right? I'm asking I color. Know, I've seen on the internet there's a lot of like you are yelling at her though Ethan Lopez, about my clients everything. absolutely I don't think you guys fully understand what's going on here not in this case but like our practice and everything else and that's fine so I'm not gonna <laughs> you guys on the internet but obviously you guys are not lawyers my <laughs> my <laughs> I'll ask you a very simple question. Why did the stock AMC go down from forty five dollars? Oh God. If you can't answer that question, that means you're not fully versed on the action. You tell me why. How about this one? I'll do one better. I've put together a statement Jesus Christ. That our shareholders are gonna use when you file suit. Okay. And the statement of facts is three hundred uh, sorry, two hundred and fifty eight pages. Oh, great. Lines, because we got discovery in Delaware. And both party attorneys out in Delaware opposed our motion. Our class, as putative class members, filed motions. Okay. Judge Zern in Delaware granted that motion, and we got discovery. And this is how we're privy to the scheme of the century called Project Popcorn. Now, I'll tell you, I don't want to bore you with all the elements, but be, listen to this very carefully. Project Popcorn in its genesis was pre uh, conceived on January 27, 2021. It was memorialized on November, approximately November 3, 2021. Insiders front ran Project Popcorn. What is Project Popcorn? Citibank and all these bad actors were sh naked short AMC. They needed shares. <laughs> all of us shareholders did not want uh, any more dilution. Uh, is that is that you laughing or is that her? <laughs> no, that's me. Oh, okay. Like a fucking swamp witch because he's going. <laughs> oh my god! You understand the bullet did an S curve before it hit Governor Connolly. Yeah. Like, Shut up. You can't. I mean, yeah. This is uh like this is where it really kind of goes into pure desperation. <laughs> okay, this is cringe. I mean, I'm. Wow, this is embarrassing. That's why this is the first time to me listening the whole thing because I started um, listening. Me too. Yeah. I'm all shouty with her. I didn't listen to it. This conversation. I didn't listen to it before this either for this reason because I knew it was going to be terrible. So. <laughs> all right. Wanted to donate a thousand dollars to eradicate the debt. Adam Aaron could not have it. Why? Because this is the scheme of the century. Long story short, Project Popcorn pivoted from a rights offering to an ATM, which is an outright dilution. You don't have to take my word. So what happens? They then move forward in ATM. March 7, I mean, May 17th, DF King with, uh, with uh, AMC, Citigroup, come up with a game plan, which is uh, do the conversion reverse split. On May 25th, Riley Financial reaches out, I'm sorry, May 27th, reaches out to John Merriweather and Sean Goodman about the scheme that was implemented on three stocks, AVGR, AGRX, and OPGN on NASDAQ. The problem is... Is he talking about B. Riley, the uh, financial services company, or who, is that who he means by Riley? Is that what he said? I'm not sure. B. Riley Financial is the... Is the is the group that um that's who he's referring to of distributing I, the equity stakes stuff. yeah 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 I, I was just making sure that's who he was referring to so he's, he's talking about this one <laughs> this one here is and, and in fact you know it's funny I, I was looking at this list of uh the most highly shorted stocks on market watch earlier and it's right up yeah, there at broad. the it, top it, 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 82. Even the target of several short reports suggesting fraud at B-Rock yeah. Financial. Yes. That one. I just haven't gotten into it because right. it's been highly volatile because it's also been been catching on recently on Wall Street bets. And I'm just like, I, I'm not about that life right now. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. I was just, yeah, I just wanted to, because I, I thought I heard Riley in there, but I just wanted to make sure that mm -hmm. that's, that was what I heard. Okay. All right.
continuing. AMC's on New York. This scheme was using preferred reverse split conversion. All those three stocks got smoked subsequent to them being moved forward. NASDAQ and, 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 and New York Stock Exchange are two different exchanges, two different standards. So they set precedence. This is all in emails. So they knew once they moved forward with preferred shares and uh, conversion reverse split, it was going to smoke the stock. And that was their intent because they needed the stock to go down. Do you understand? Now, how did how does Antara get involved? If you, in order to rig the vote, they needed a hedge fund. So here's what happens: they move forward with Project Popcorn. They launch Ape. Ape tanks, and they knew it was going to take down. Why? Because equity. I mean, uh, institutions cannot hold preferred stock. That's not in their index. So 78 million shares were sold off from day one. The board committee set the price to sell Ape at the low, the lowest, the floor was two dollars. It breaks two, they lower the floor to one. Now, why did they need that? Because the prior, back in May, Weinberg, who works at DF King, explained to him how to rig the vote. In order for this to be successful, they didn't want our Ape to trade. The intent was to convert Ape into AMC. And you could see it, three months before Ape is even launched, they're talking how is Ape and moving forward with this going to be successful. They needed the conversion. So now they have to rig the vote. They had data, they're, oh, if this happens, this, this is how we get it. So mind you, in order to get the, uh, the, the, the most bang for your bunk, a buck to vote, you got to get the price down. So now AMC and Ape are trading with never traded at parity. They take it down, they tank it. Adam Aaron does not support the stock. Instead, he's asking, let's get it, let's okay, set the floor okay, even okay. more. That, that, it that, finally breaks a dollar. It gets to 68 cents. Like, it wasn't uh, okay. tanked. It, 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 look, he, he's right about these institutions couldn't hold it because it's a preferred stock, but it wasn't an intentional tanking of the stock. They expected it to rebound or stay close to parity between Ape and AMC because they're effectively the same ownership of the company, same value, same rights to the, the company in a bankruptcy. Well, All yeah, these things. They that's what they intended it to be. And they could just dilute the shit out of Ape and keep their their yeah. actual Ape shareholders that were still the only you're right. Happy. The um, only reason they did it. Free lunch. Right. The only reason they did this is because at least to what Adam Aaron said is because the retail shareholder base Poo pooed the idea of incre uh, of of diluting the AMC float and raising equity that way. So faced with the mounting debt and a fucking writers and actor strike, we didn't even know they didn't even know that that was coming. Think about that. When Adam Aaron said, "Well, you know what? The the retail investors they don't want us to dilute, so we're not going to ask them." Okay, great decision, Adam. They he didn't even know. We didn't even know we were going to have a fucking strike. We didn't know there was going to be a war in fucking Ukraine. We didn't know about any of this shit. This is fascinating. It's fascinating because what do you think they're going to fucking do? They have to raise money somehow. And the reality is Miriam Tauber said, you guys obviously aren't lawyers. No, they're not. Nor are, nor, nor are they corporate finance experts of, of any kind. They don't even fancy themselves to be amateur enthusiasts of corporate finance if there is such a thing <laughs> i guess that would be maybe us or well, <laughs> something but what... like they don't understand the fucking point here they they have no conception of what is even what they what is what the goal even is here which you know is pretty fucking sad he fancies himself a, a and he says so on his twitter profile he fancies himself a professional activist what <laughs> great thing is for him is that he wants to be the baggy version of Ralph Nader. Oh, oh, okay. Well, I mean, then he needs to actually, like, produce something material, like, I don't know, I know right? unsafe at any speed, and get some fucking laws passed and save some fucking lives. Then he could be used in the same fucking sentence as Ralph Nader. Or even, you know, well, that's, that's, I, that's, you know, okay. I like, what the fuck? Hasn't said that. I, I want to make that clear. He hasn't said that. That's my undercut insult at him. Let's okay, but still, he... Think of, <laughs> still, all right, I'm not going to... Well, I'm not going to go say anything, but yeah. 
Yeah, right. He he sees himself as the advocate, protector, somebody who's going to bring about change, positive change, you know, um, defeat the system, maybe even bring about uh, revolution or something like that. Okay. I mean, it's the same delusional. Yeah, go ahead. Because if you listen to the the live stream that I uh, I have on my channel and the clips I took for it, he very much sees himself as a revolutionary. He opined and openly in that live in that Twitter space that I got a clip of that he believes that he really should have been born in 1750 so that he could participate in the American Revolution. He thinks that's where his and I quote spirit is. That that is the wow. whole narcissism that surrounds Ethan. He thinks. That he's some patriotic, patriotic revolutionary that is going to come and smash up the system. Um, yeah, you know, he and Sochka are probably friends, right? So, yeah. No, because Sochka is a yes voter. Oh. But it's the same mentality. This what? See, like. Revolutionary. I say these guys are more similar than they realize. You know, it's like. When when you seek, well, I, you should say that because I I've agreed I, I've said that they're two sides of the same coin anyway. And there's this yeah from pre World War II that about fascists that uh, mm. uh, that communists are red and fascists are red on the inside. <laughs> it, it, it really gets down to the the core of what both of their beliefs are. They may have it's, distinct opinions on certain things, but they're, yeah. at the end of the day, authoritarian. Yeah, the, they're the, yes, 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 yes. You know, it may, I, both of those guys, I see, you know, I see, uh, well, they're just, yeah, they're, they, they, they definitely both at least portray the, the sense that they value structure and rules and order, you know, and power and power oh. as long and as long as they are in those positions or uh, you know, have the feeling of mobility towards those positions of power, right? So, like, the institutions are weakening and the people are gaining strength kind of thing, which, I mean, if you... Right. At, at the end of the day, a lot of these meme stock people, especially the more radical ones, when it boils down to it, is that they are populist authoritarians. Yeah, well, we know how well that, that ends, usually. Moron, but All right. We have to continue on this? Oh, man. All right. Well, no, we're over halfway, so all right. All right. That is one email. Final. Well. December 6th, DF King, uh, Crystal Scordato, reaches out to AMC, gives them a, a dynamic ledger from Excel sheet that explains to them how many, share, how, many, how many shares they need in order to rig the vote. Enters on Tara. Then there's an email on December 7th, a meeting. December 8th is an email. On is willing to hold shares to rig the vote and vote this way. They have 190 million shares to uh, invest, quote-unquote invest, which gives them 278 million shares. That is enough shares to rig the vote. They promised to hold it. Now, why did they get away with the... Uh, uh, se- now, <coughs> excuse me, let me break in here <coughs> and say that what Manuel says... <coughs> excuse me. Most of these guys hold an insignificant number of shares anyway. Because they all bought at the top. Whoops. Ethan, uh, I don't know what Ethan's share count is, but I know Jordan Affolter posted his share count, and it was <laughs> 69 shares. Lol. Oh, that's great. But well, most of these, most yeah. of these people own a significant, own a, own a very insignificant amount of AMC because they all bought at the top. That's why they're so fucking pissed. True. Yeah, good. I'm supposed to keep going. Right. That's a good point. That whole the lawsuit involved in this case. Mm-hmm. The plaintiffs that were involved in this case, and I bet a bunch of the object uh, objectors, not 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 like the individuals, like the big names, like Ethan and Al. From, well, maybe not Al from Boston because he released. He owned about a couple, I think a thousand or, or somewhere in that neighborhood. But a lot of these these people that were really loud voices on AMC that were all top buyers. Yeah. I. Having bought into Ape and having close to three thousand shares of Ape had more interest in the company than any of these fucking clients. <laughs> yeah, the thing that they hated that they wanted to, you know, basically strike from erase from existence, if played correctly, uh, yeah. Which, be, by the way, I I thought that was the point. You know, like what is all this bullshit? The point's to make fucking money. 
100%. And did you make money on your arbitrage? I, I think you did, right? Absolutely. So, absolutely. Like, all right. So clearly, it's possible, and like almost everybody and here I made money I in June of twenty one. So, like, if they had been able to do that arbitrage at the beginning of the year, like they wanted to, mm -hmm. when and when AMC was still up at like what was it? Almost, it's still either. Oh yeah. The, well, it's the high single digits or in the, the low double digits, like $12, they would have been able to sell at a much higher price and effect and effectively had much less dilution. But because yeah. these ignorant morons continued to fight it, that's, you know, dilute at a much lower, lower price. I felt, I always felt like the whole Antara lawsuit drag, dragged on for way, or not Antara, I'm sorry, Allegheny, felt like they were wait, trying to waste time. Now, I don't know and probably not and some of the apes were saying this too so i definitely questioned myself when i found myself wondering myself but there was so much emphasis on oh we got to make sure we get the letters and uh the database of people who support and you know all this stuff when at the end of the day we knew what was going to happen we knew what was going to happen yeah and i'm not claiming that this was intentional or anything don't get me wrong i'm not claiming that at all i'm just saying based on observing what happened wow <laughs> you know what a bunch of bullshit Going, um, short oh my god oh my god because part of the quick call pro was surprise allowed to sell shares once it breached three do you understand how about this let me send you the statement of facts that's great but listen i it's a it sounds like you have a great case okay a, there's a lot of a case i'm not <laughs> Settle with Antara, who are the criminals? Okay, okay, okay. Listen to me, all right? Yeah. I, I have sued lots of companies, all right? So I've sued, let's say, like. You God know, bless this Kirby, woman. Remember him, right? Dealing with this shit. Yeah, she's doing great. I mean, she's a pro for sure. She's definitely professional. I'm going to roll it back. Like, just a tad. You, like, I would have hung up on this fucking idiot. Oh, yeah. Ago. And she's right. Fuck it. She doesn't have to put up with this. She doesn't have to put up with any of this shit. Like, who the fuck is this guy? He's some random shareholder. Like, maybe. Like, like he, he, she, he, she doesn't work for him. Okay. I'm, I rolled it back just a little bit. More ear bleed incoming. Yeah. Maybe. If it wants to play. I don't know what's, why it's not playing now. Once it breaks three. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Do you understand? How about this? Let me send you the statement of facts. That's great. But listen, I, it's a dear... Sounds like you have a great case, okay? A, There's a lot of... A case? I'm not looking for a case. I'm not looking for to settle with Amparo or the criminals. Listen, okay, okay, okay. Listen to me, all right? Yeah. I, I have sued lots of companies, all right? So I've sued, let's say, like, you know, you heard of Martin Shkreli? Remember him? Right? I sued his company, right? At the same time, the SEC was also suing his company. At the same time, the DOJ was pursuing criminal case charges against him, right? At the same time, other stuff was going on, right? I settled my case against him, okay? It didn't affect any of that stuff. It was a shareholder suit at the same time, a class action, right? For other stuff, for 10v5 stuff, which is regular fraud. Well, let me ask you this. Why don't you, why don't you ask? I, 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 I'll let you talk for a while. Not Go ahead. You have the floor. Go ahead. My claim does not involve fraud, okay? We're not doing them for fraud. We're doing them for a straightforward statutory violation that doesn't require there to be any malicious intent. And in fact, in many of my cases, the person who violated this rule against short swing trading didn't do any fraud. Okay, then I'll ask you, Miriam, Miriam, why were there short-term selling? Why was there short-term selling? Just listen to me. Listen no, Miriam, you don't even know. Hold on, hold on, Miriam. All right, you know what? You got the floor. I'll ask you a question after. Okay. Go ahead. Sorry. 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 You're right. You're right. I mean, like, because they made money. Like, see, this is what they don't get. Sorry. I, I just got to say this. Because they made money. Because they wanted to make money. Because they wanted to s lose less money. I would, I would guess it's the reason, which is foreign to these people. It's completely foreign. And she makes a great point that, like, this is a short swing rule. This is like yeah. a traffic violation. It's clear and cut. Got caught doing 50 in a 40. Right. That's what this is. Brilliant like, anal analogy. analogy, yeah. On these short swing rules, most of the people that get caught in these short swing rule violations committed no fraud. Right. They're not trying to hide it. In a 40. It's not like they misrepresented anything on a, on a form. They reported it, right? 
to them. Right, because the information was out in the open, and oops, they 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 did it. You know, too soon. Oops, oh, we fucked up. Yeah, like like you said, and we've said many times. It's black and white. It's it, it for these people. It's black and white. They don't make these distinctions. Yeah. It's very much black or white. They all they're all bad or they're all good. They're on our side. They're against us. But you know, I mean, especially talking to a lawyer. I mean. A little, what's you know the joke or whatever goes like you ask a lawyer a random you know question about the, can I ask you a question about the law and the lawyer says you know well I can already tell you the answer it depends <laughs> you know so yeah, yeah. Well, I mean it, like the it, world is fucking messy Antares, yeah and the thing about the Antares situation is that it since they got these um, these ape shares as uh as payment for uh, debt previously contracted. The reason that AMC did this deal was to take debt off its balance sheet. Yeah. There's an exception for that in the SEC ruling, uh, in the SEC uh, laws, in the, in the securities laws. Oh. So if you get uh, shares in relation to a debt previously contracted, which can, you know, that this is to protect banks. So they're not stuck with these shares of these shitty companies, mm. uh, you know, that they've lent debt to, or whatever the case may be. You can go ahead and sell those. They're not they're not tied to the short swing rule. So if mm. if Antara had simply closed its ape position first and then sold the puts, they would have been totally fine. Really? Because they wow pushed their position below ten percent. They mm -hmm. weren't a insider anymore, and then they could have closed the arbitrage. But they did it the stupid way, and now mm. here they are in court. Yeah. Wow, that's interesting. Fascinating. Okay. So uh, so then one could say then, in, in, in some sense then, that the system worked. They fucked up. They did exactly. it something the dumb way. And, it, you know, what the apes and I say most people think is that these people get away with, you know, crime all day, every day. But here we have something like, yeah, they could have done it right. But they didn't, and they're going to have to pay as a result. That's sort of what's supposed to happen, I thought. But I don't know. It can't be because, clear, you know, according to the apes, the market is all, uh, you know, hedge funds. Oh, yeah. Hedge funds and their buddies, um, you know, just basically doing whatever they want to make money, right? Fascinating stuff. All right. Um, ear bleed warning. One of the, Hopefully one of the last ear bleed warnings. Okay, okay. When I settle my case for the statutory violation, right, because it is not a fraud case, it doesn't affect any claims that have to do with any kind of fraudulent activity, which it sounds like what you're describing, right, in much more detail than I need to know, quite frankly. Okay? <laughs> so, <laughs> you sound like you have a great case, and you should definitely pursue it, and it will not be affected by the settlement of this claim at all. Do you understand that? Miriam, I'll ask you this again. Why was there short term? Oh my God. Okay. Do you know what short? Okay. Short swing selling. Why was there short term selling? Trading means that you are yeah. buying and selling. With Why the was there? Right. Okay. It doesn't. In, in for the purposes of my claim. Okay. Yeah. What I'm trying to tell you. It doesn't matter. The statute. If you look at the statute that I'm suing under, it sounds like familiar with the complaint and everything else. You look at the statute that I'm suing under, which you can Google. The statute specifically says yeah. it applies without any, irrespective of any intent on the part of the insider, which means it doesn't matter if the insider is acting in good faith, bad faith, defrauded anybody, or did it. This is an interesting the point. was completely unaware of the rule, just tried to pay off the debt, had no need money for his kids. Yeah. It doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter why they did it. If they still need to give back the profits, right? And profits are calculated under specific rules, and that's how it is. It's a statutory claim for strict liability, and it does not, settling this claim does not mean that they are off the hook for fraudulent conduct, which is a separate claim, okay? That's a so good that's explanation. A separate section of the Securities Exchange Act, and you, and it doesn't, for example, the Delaware case is going on, right? It doesn't mean that we can't pursue this claim, because the Delaware case is a class action, which it sounds like your case also is, okay? This is not a class action. This is a, not a, a derivative claim. Right. It's a statutory strict liability claim case. It's very specific. It doesn't affect anything else. So I don't think that you should be mad at me 
for settling something that you think is affecting anything else that you are talking about. I don't have to know any of that. It's none of my business. I mean, if I was hired to pursue the case, then it would be. But I don't care. This is a strict liability case. I don't care what the intent was. You want to bring that case? Go Boom. Ahead. No one is stopping you. The settlement certainly will not stop you. Okay? How much discovery did you conduct, if you don't mind, man? <laughs> this is... We didn't conduct any discovery because the discovery <laughs> Not needed since <laughs> what why would you need to do that like oh my god yeah the the title of this file that i'm playing in this player is called ethan is extra dumb dot mp3 and i think that's a great that title my doing. that was his doing <laughs> but let me say this um uh this is what's on display here you know actually you know maybe i should maybe i should just play the quote here real quick um uh here it is Nothing is too wonderful to be true that it can't be reproduced in another experiment. And this is what distinguishes science from religion. So what we have here on display is science, which is the lawyer, Miriam Taub, versus religion, which is Ethan. We have someone who is focusing on facts and reproducibility and statutory claims versus someone who is operating on emotions, feeling, and subjectivity. This is a very, and it sounds like he might, now I don't want to jump to any conclusions, but assuming that he was listening to what she just said, I don't know what the hell he, what's he going to bitch about next? What could you possibly say if you listened to what she said, you understood the words, you were able to comprehend what was being told, what could you possibly say at this point? That w why would you even need to continue? Why would you even need to continue this phone call at this point? I would have been like, oh, well, I guess I was mistaken. I am so sorry, ma'am. And I apologize for disrespecting you. Thank you for educating me. Have a wonderful day. He wasn't listening. He I know. I figured that that's the case. Oh, my God. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, I'm going to continue. Ear bleed. Your plugs in. Filed the SEC from fours that admitted they engaged in this trading. And this trading is a per se violation of the rule against short swing trading. Profits are calculated in a very specific. Way. I'll ask you this again. Okay. Why did you? Then how about how come? How come you didn't entertain the discovery? Because there's no need for discovery, as they admit to the trading they did. I'm going to ask right? again. B -b 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 Why did you? Right. So, <laughs> um. God, I, like, like, like mm. that's, that's the entire thing right there. That yeah, they admit they they filed the filings, which proves that they violated the law. So it's pretty code. clear cut. Yeah, that's There's this is no cut and dried. Discovery. They admit they did it. Signed, sealed, delivered. Yeah, like what? It's pretty. Yeah, seems very straightforward. And um, I understand pro se. I under I get it, but this should be. It'll, and it's not going to be. I know it's not. But to me, it, it is. And like, if if I had kids, I would use this as a as a valid teaching point too. I <laughs> probably, you know, because I think that smart people could learn from this. They probably don't need to learn this because they already know it. But this, you know, to me, screams like, okay, yeah, you have a group of people who think that they can walk into any situation, any industry, any any anything. And, and, you know, after 15 minutes, they can they can pick up all they need to know to be smarter than you at it. You know, like this guy thinks that he could he thought he could outsmart this lawyer going into this call. I guarantee it. And he, that's how he carries himself. But I mean, come on. That's ridiculous. Yeah, he, he, that's absurd. What? Like what? What? What the fuck? He's just a dick. This guy is a fucking dickhead. Mm -hmm. He is a fucking bully. 100%. He's an asshole. He's a moron. And he's a fucking yeah. dick. Don't be a dick. All you need to know, all you need to know about Ethan is this is the guy who says, who said, and I quote, "I've been arrested seven times, and I'm proud of each and every one of them." I mean, what? <laughs> right, and is it for things like civil disobedience and like, or like, like trespassing and stuff you like would that? Probably frame it as civil disobedience, but one of the times. That according to him, it was the, the the charges were withdrawn, but he was accused of attacking a state judge. What? 
attacking? Yes. Oh, Jesus. He was in a hearing on one of his arrests, and charges afterwards were filed against him for attacking a judge. Wow. No shit. This is the kind of person that you're dealing with. Yeah. Someone who talks about the rules and talks about how things should be done and what the law is. But when it comes to him, the rules and the law do not apply. Rules for thee, not for me, is what we call that, you know? Yes. Rules for this thee, not for me. Head. This is the kind of shithead that you're dealing with. Oh, Someone yeah. Who thinks that they are above the law because they are a patriotic revolutionary. Right. And in reality, I mean, like, this is, this is pure, this is so delusional. Like, I mean... It, it's it's really I mean who th who would have thought maybe somebody could say that that they knew that this was going to be like this but I mean holy shit they're like no that nobody could claim that they knew it was going to be like this because well nobody knew how it was going to play out I mean aside from the fact that we knew it was going to play out in people losing their money if you want to go down that road we've been saying that for f three years but <laughs> You know, so that part is not surprising. That part is absolutely predictable. But the way it has played out, that's always the thing. All these court cases, in and out of court, fascinating. All right, we got about... The thing I said about the... Go ahead. The thing I said about the AMC lawsuit, if you read the, the precedent in the Delaware Court of Chancery, if you read the precedent, if you read previous cases, if you read the facts of the case as to how settlement plays out, it was really easy to tell what was going to happen here. Yeah. It was really fucking easy. It it was written on the wall before the hearing even took place. <laughs> right. And the fact that people were surprised by the outcome baffles me. It mm -hmm. was so easy. Right. You just have to read the rules and you just have to read how courts handle these situations. And the same thing goes for the Al for Boston, Jordan Affolter lawsuit. The same goes for all these bullshit it all, yeah. stock lawsuits that are going on. It is so easy to set, tell where things are going before they even start, especially in the case of Jordan and Al's lawsuit. <sighs> they didn't present any facts. Well, they just, they just yeah. chat all over a court document and called it a day. Yeah, yeah. I mean, most of these, I, I feel like most of these lawsuits should not even, even proceeded, to be honest with you. Like, they shouldn't have made it this far. It, it baffles me as to how they did. Be, and at the end of the day, you know, this is one thing that, that I, you know, people need to get in, through their brains. It's about money. Everything is about fucking money, basically. Oh, they're not going to have the ape. They're, where are they going to get the ape shares? They're not going to have the ape shares to deliver the dividend to the da 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 da. They're just going to, they're, money. yeah, they, it doesn't matter if there are shares or not. They're just going to pay for it. So, and I would say that um, you you mentioned that these lawsuits should have been dismissed outright, and I don't necessarily disagree with it, but I think that – Yeah, I mean just that's a general sentiment. Like, this fraud. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But they talk about like that the system is always working against them and everything. If the system is really working against you, would you would your lawsuit be given the time of day? Here we go. Earplugs. God, Ear bleed. Start the discovery. You're trying to help the company out. Why don't you conduct other discovery? Okay. All right. Because it doesn't matter to our case. I have with you all day. We don't, I, I, I have, you're not my client, okay? We're, 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 we're trying to help the company out. No. 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 They, she is pursuing, you know, a legal action against someone who broke the law. The, yeah. the, the, the outcome of that. But it is breaking the law. Yeah, it's breaking, it's, it's she, vi violating statute. Let me say it that way. Yes. Which is the same thing, but I mean, it sounds less criminal. Sounds less like, you know, sounds more white collar. Again, it's like you were driving 50 in a 40. Yeah. So breaking the law, now, but it's not the same thing. If Now, okay. So if you are an advocate, if you're a Ralph Nader, okay, this is a good example here. If you're Ralph Nader and you're like, whoa, whoa, we need to, you know, even a, even a crash at a slow speed, is, is you know, is going to be devastating. We really need to, you know, da, 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 seatbelts. Okay. Did anybody accuse? Did anybody accuse him of of trying to help out the government? <laughs> because isn't that what he's doing? Because well, that would result in all these fines and for seatbelt violations and all this going back to the government coffers. No, 
that's a byproduct. That's a result. That is a resulting action. Of, you know, that's a consequence of something. That, but that's not the intent. And, and, and the fact that he can't separate these things, you know, I mean, it's just, it's, you know, it, what can I say? This is, we're, we're, we're describing, this is pathology. Then we're, you know, we're, we're forging. I'll say, you know, you're witnessing history to, to, to borrow a phrase from data zero. You're witnessing history as we write and, and, and establish this, this, you know, the uh, criteria for this new path pathology uh, called bag holders dementia. <laughs> where people who are down 80, 90, 95, 96, 99 percent say and do some of the stupidest fucking things you could imagine. And that's basically it. It's going in the, it's going in the DSM, in the new DSM-6, bag holders dementia. There are countries, th there's a reason, I mean, not just economically, that people want to have. All right, let's finish this Ethan thing. Yes. All right, earplugs. And I don't even have to take this phone call, okay? Come to the hearing and state your grievances, all right? And we'll have this debate before Bingo. the judge. All right, then uh, I'll ask that last question and we'll come back full circle. Why did uh, Antara sell shares uh, short term anyway? I tell you again, I don't care why because my statute applies. <laughs> I'm just asking you, don't you want to know? <laughs> don't you want to know? No, no she doesn't care. You can tell me, sure, why? All right, so here we go. Back in uh, December 8th, there's an email exchange between Citigroup, Derek Van Zandt, and AMC. It says the terms. They're willing to buy X amount of shares, which was $190 million they're putting up at 60-something cents, which came out to 278 million shares. Antara wanted all control. One of the stipulations that they agreed to is, if, now mind you, Ape was trading at 68 cents. They get a windfall now, 278 million shares. This is Quick Quo Pro. They're now gonna use all their shares to vote yes. That's part of the agreement. They're rigging the vote. As I told you, on December 6th, there's an email exchange with DF King explaining to AMC with a dynamic Excel sheet ledger, if you manipulate the numbers, how do we guarantee to get the vote to move forward to convert? Because that's what their intent was. It was never to allow eight to to, to uh, randomly continue to tr uh, trade with AMC forever. So here's the point: part of the conditions, not only to vote yes on all the three uh, proposals, was this: ready for it? Once Ape breached three dollars, and that happened, and I'll tell you when. Hold on. It was February second, because the record date was February 8th. February 2nd, it breached three for the first time, which now allowed Antara to continue to sell and, and, and collect on their windfall. Why did they need this? Because this is part of the scheme. They couldn't allow the stock to keep rising. Do you understand? And now you're entertaining a corrupt uh, entity hedge fund that has screwed us hedge, uh, our shareholders. Do you understand, Miriam? No. Like I told you, I'm getting money out of them, right? Three million. Who cares about three? You get money out of them if you want. That's, it doesn't really... Doesn't Miriam, the key, Miriam. They want a Moas, I think. Oh, my God. Doesn't he... Isn't that what he's saying? Like, three million. Who cares about three million? That's going to be pennies to me. That's not going to help me at all. Well, yeah, no, it's not supposed to. I mean, it's not... Like, <laughs> this Again. is... It's a traffic ticket. Right. Tara was doing 50 and a 40. Yeah. And I, I mean, I, I guess, I guess I see how he's tying this in with that. But it, it, at the end of the day, though, it doesn't matter that what she said, it doesn't matter why they sold or bought or sold anything. It doesn't matter why somebody yeah. does it. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah. If, in this, in for this, it doesn't matter for this case, for this specific application of justice <laughs> uh no it it, exactly. it doesn't it does not matter it will not change the outcome of either uh her action or any potential action in the future because it will be on if anything will be on record yeah they they settled this lawsuit you know which 
I, whether they admitted to guilt or not, I guess they would, I guess, or I, I don't know, or wouldn't they? Well, that's, that's the thing about it is, is that normally they wouldn't they don't have to admit. Yeah. Normally they would have an acceptance, consent and acceptance and uh, consent, but they, they're not admitting fault typically with these types of sec settlements or uh, I'm sorry, fines, but, um, I don't know. Is this a fine? And, and I think that it, it's a, no, it's a, it's a, it's a settlement, private settlement. It's going to the company. So nothing is going to the sec here. Is that correct? And, and I think that's the key thing that, that she's bringing up as a lawyer is like, they are on trial for doing 50 and a 40. Now, could they have murdered someone as well? Yeah, but that's not relevant to this case. You bring your own, case about them possibly murdering someone yeah and that the 27th and that future case potential future case is completely independent of any outcome in this case exactly. now it, what, in other words if that's true what you're saying may be true but what we're doing now will have no impact on it and that if it ends up being true will will have had no impact on on our case so it is materially irrelevant Exactly, 100%. I mean, like I said, I see what he's trying to do. I see how he's trying to tie these two things together. But the problem is... Don't want to be tied together. There's no evidence. There, there, there's no evidence of intent. Like, how are you ever going to prove that, that this was, you know, like, I, I just don't see it. And so it really is this kind of a big ball of conspiracy theories, it seems like. I mean... I'm not sure what else I'm supposed to get out of this. 100%. Let's listen to the last minute. Last minute. Last minute. Do you understand the, the market cap? Oh my God. See, went from 23.7 billion down to 7, 780 million in market cap because of Project Popcorn. Nothing is relevant. None of this is relevant to my claim. You are free to pursue any other claims you want, and the release does not release anything you're talking about. Even if they relate to these transactions, Okay. So I just gave you notice that fraud's being committed against our shareholders, and you don't care. I told you again, this is not a fraud. Case. Why would she? I'm giving you now notice as a as a as a shareholder to an attorney. You are now mind ma mandated ethical obligation. What is to give the judge notice? Well, you know what, Miriam? You know what, Miriam? Well, hold on, one last thing, Miriam. One last thing. I have you on a recorded line, and I'm going to give this to the judge. Be good. <laughs> oh, wow. Holy shit. That was the part I was waiting for, because I I'd skipped ahead to that. It's oh, my like, God. Oh, oh, by the way, this whole conversation's been recorded. I'm going to give it to the judge. You're so screwed. Like, not really. Oh, my God. This I mean, how narcissistic he is. And, and wow. This before in in his other things that he records people all the time and he thinks that this is some fucking gotcha game like he's he's an unveiled the conspiracy that's screwing over amc investors and it's fucking pathetic it's wow childish um it's crazy the lawyer entertained him this long maybe she's one of us <laughs> that's funny look that is funny I don't think she's one of us because, like, I think me and Scott have both said, we would have hung up on him long the fuck ago. Well, she's more like one of us than one of them. I'll say that. I'll, I'll well, give him that. True. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I will say that. But, like, the fact that she has the patience and God-given, like, just determination to help him understand things like a teacher trying to teach a fucking ignorant little fucking kindergarten brat how the law works – is just I I couldn't do that. I would have told this. I would have told Ethan to go fuck himself a long time ago because that's what he needs to be told. That he's a fucking sure brat who needs to shut the fuck up and color in the lines. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I mean, we've been this that that phrase has been thrown out there a lot lately. So. One of us. We accept that one of us. 